Hi, this is John Fallows, V6EY, making it up and uh, continuing with our series of exploring GNU radio. I thought today it might be fun to actually create an FM radio simulator. Frequency modulation is a bit more complicated than AM, uh, but let's take a look at what we managed to accomplish. So what we've done, I'll just play some music here for you. What we've done is we've uh, created a, an FM station. It's broadcasting on 120 kilohertz on my computer. And I'm just uh, playing a file that I recorded earlier from one of our local FM stations. And uh, that file is coming out of the WAV file player. There's a nice signal. And we're converting it uh, to a format proper for frequency modulation by integrating the signal. And uh, here's the FM signal coming out of our voltage-controlled oscillator on GNU Radio. Broadcasting on 120 kilohertz with around 25 kilohertz uh, deviation. <clears throat> Very approximate. And here's the audio coming out of the receiver. Now, we did something different here. We didn't use the uh, blocks for uh, FM transmission or uh, reception uh, wideband receiver. We used actually the bare metal. <laughs> we used the voltage controlled oscillator to get this all to happen. So let's, uh, let's take a look at what we did. And uh, this little program that I've created gives you a choice of playing a tone or audio from a file. And then we've also got a special situation here where we can calibrate the, uh, calibrate the deviation and we'll take you through all of that. I like that song. <laughs> okay, let's turn this off and take a look at the program. So we're doing an overall sample rate of 360 uh, uh, K. Uh, or 360,000 samples per second. Our sources are 48,000 samples per second, either a tone or a wave file that's been previously recorded. And the trick to making this work is uh, varying the frequency from our voltage-controlled oscillator. And to uh, use the VCO in GNU radio, you need to set up what's called a sensitivity um, parameter. And that basically is two times pi times the frequency that you want the oscillation to happen on. So this number here, that's the sensitivity in the VCO, is two pi times 120,000 kilohertz. That's where that number comes from. We've got a number of choosers for choosing the source, either a tone or an audio file. We've got a chooser for choosing the mode for calibration or for just normal activity. And then we have uh, control for the level input, the frequency input if we're broadcasting a tone, and the volume coming out. So I've divided this uh, <coughs> GNU radio program into uh, three parts. One is the signal source, two is the quote-unquote transmitter, and three is the receiver, which we showed down below. And I'm making use of these virtual sinks and sources for connecting uh, uh, data throughout the program without actually having to draw lines to uh, connect things up. So this first section here is the source of the audio, and uh, it's either a signal generator uh, running at 48K uh, or a WAV uh, file source, the 16-bit WAV file uh, recorded at 48 kilohertz. And I just recorded some audio from our local FM station, CKUAFM. And then they go into a selector where you can choose uh, between uh, the tone or the audio. And I know the selector block is deprecated in GNU Radio, but it's, it works and it's very handy. So that's the source of the audio. I can choose either the file to playback or uh, a single tone. And uh, then for the transmitter, we want to... Uh, actually get this working at uh, 360k, which is more than twice the, uh, uh, the frequency of the 120 kilohertz transmitter that we've created. So we do some uh, resampling to go from uh, 48 kilohertz coming out of the source up to 360k. We do a little bit of low-pass filtering to get rid of aliasing. Uh, we added a throttle in because we're raising the, the rate 
quite a bit, and I'm not sure if it's totally necessary, but we put one in anyway. Now, in order to drive the uh, VCO, uh, the resting frequency of the VCO is based on receiving uh, um, uh, a voltage of 1. And so we add a constant of 1 to the uh, signal coming out of the, uh, the source to make it an offset uh, um, um, variable frequency. And uh, then we integrate. Uh, when you're doing a, uh, an FM transmitter, you want to use an integrator on the incoming audio. And that basically just gives you a trigonometric function uh, that's suitable for modulating the VCO. And then we drive the VCO uh, with the audio signal offset by 1, and that gives us the frequency modulation. Now, to get the frequency modulation set up right, we actually can do a calibration. Uh, the way FM works is the deviation is driven by the amplitude of the signal that you're creating. And so um, you need to sort of pick the modulation index so that the amplitude of the source that you're feeding into the VCO gives you the type of deviation that you want. And I've got this set up for approximately 25 kilohertz deviation, which uh, let's call it uh, medium wave FM or me medium deviation FM. So that signal coming out of the VCO is effectively a transmitter uh, on 120 kilohertz. And then to receive it, uh, we, we basically put it through another bandpass filter and decimate it down to 120 kilohertz, which I picked, uh, uh, picked as the channel, channel rate, um, some audio passband filtering, a volume control, and the audio coming out the speaker. So we're, we're using the FM demod block in, uh, in GNU radio to, to grab the audio. <clears throat> and there's the whole process. And let's take a look now again at how it works. Um, in terms of uh, first setting up the uh, calibration. So if we look at the spectrum uh, at just a plain no deviation, we're at 120, we're at 120 uh, kilohertz of, uh, of signal output, which uh, I can get there. And <clears throat> this is a, a voltage of one coming into the VCO. If we increase the voltage then coming into the VCO to 1.1, then uh, we get a little bit of deviation. If we increase it to uh, 1.3, we get a bit more deviation, and so on. So by adjusting the level, we're able to set the amount of deviation uh, that, uh, that we're getting. And uh, let's set the cal on for that. Okay, so there we go. So to calibrate, uh, I've got this set up for a signal level of about 1.2 volts peak to peak, and that's giving me approximately 24 kilohertz, 25 kilohertz of deviation from the center resting carrier frequency. So as we said before, the, uh, the deviation of a um, FM signal is driven by the... Uh, driven by the uh, level or the amplitude. So there we go. We've got roughly a one kilohertz tone going in at 1.3 volts into the voltage control oscillator. And as we adjust the level, we increase the deviation or decrease it. And the number of sidebands uh, showing up on the FM signal is driven by the frequency of modulation. So if we reduce the frequency of modulation down to 250 hertz, we've got uh, very, very little sidebands. And we've got basically a uh, 250 kilohertz signal coming out, uh, or 250 hertz signal coming out here. And if we demodulate it, you can see way down here. Or we can increase the frequency up to about... Uh, 1k and there's our signal coming out there's the fm spectrum with the sidebands and there's the fm modulation on the transmitter which is set up for a level of uh, one one volt amplitude or whatever you want to call that okay so one of the neat things you can do if you want to get into the theory 
of bezel functions and the modulating index and all that sort of stuff. You can actually use this program to play around with the level and the frequencies and find the zero crossing uh, nulls of your FM signal without, uh, without giving anything away. There's a whole bunch of theory about how to calibrate an FM transmitter and uh, you've got all the controls here to play around and do that. But it's a lot more fun just playing music. <laughs> And uh, this works very nicely. There's the source. There's the integrated uh, signal shifted up, offset to uh, amplitude of 1. So basically, by creating a signal between 1 and 1 1.5 peak to peak, uh, or 0.85 to 1.1, I'm going to get around 20, 25 kilohertz of deviation out of my signal. There's the FM signal, you can see as it's being modulated, the amplitude of the FM signal stays constant, and uh, the sidebands and the modulation frequency change, <laughs> which is the way it's supposed to work. There's the FM spectrum, the signal coming out of the uh, uh, transmitter. This is uh, pretty much what you'd see with, uh, with a normal FM station in your neighborhood, uh, except the deviation is a lot lower. And then the demodulation comes out. I've got it uh, set to roll off around 10K. So there's a complete program for playing around with uh, modulating uh, frequency and uh, creating yourself a little FM station on your computer and learning how to adjust the level and the frequency and the various aspects of uh, controlling frequency modulation. It all works nicely in the new radio. And we'll just let the music end, and that's it for this video. And you can download a copy of this uh, GNU Radio program or block diagram from my website, Making It Up. This is John the 6 ey having fun exploring the new radio. Joan Osborne working with the Holmes Brothers and part of a wonderful tribute to Sister Rosetta.